You are not attracted to toxic men, except the... <laughs> he steps towards me and I look up and up. A plus to the dragons. Again and again with the eyebrow, I swear. <gasps> This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello everyone and welcome to another reading vlog. It has been a while. I am so excited to be back with another reading vlog after having spent the last few months buckling down on the novel I was writing and I went out to all of you guys on Instagram to ask which overhyped TikTok book, which popular book you would like to see me read next. And overwhelmingly, everyone said Fourth Wing. There was a second book slash series, which was also really popular that people wanted me to read. So I'm considering reading that one too. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. This book is massive. It's blown up over the last few months. It's so popular. What is Fourth Wing? What is it about? I know that it's a romanticry book with romantic. Every time, fantasy, romance, romantic. <laughs> Essentially, it is a fantasy novel with a romance plot to it. The blurb of the story reads, Welcome to the brutal elite world of Basgeath War College. 20-year-old Violet Sorengale was supposed to enter the Squibe... 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 <laughs> Squibe... Quadrant, living a quiet life among books and history. Now the commanding general, her toughest talons mother, has ordered Violet to join the hundreds of candidates striving to become the elite of Navarre, dragon riders. But when you're smaller than everyone else and your body is brittle, death is only a heartbeat away because dragons don't bond to fragile humans, they incinerate them. With fewer dragons willing to bond than cadets, most would kill Violet to better their own chances of success. The rest would kill her just for being her mother's daughter, like Zayden Riorsen, the most powerful and ruthless wing leader in the Riders Quadrant. Violet begins to suspect leadership is hiding a terrible secret. I've either heard people absolutely loving it or absolutely hating it. I'm interested to see where I sit on that continuum. So without further ado, let's jump into the reading vlog and I'm gonna be reading Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Hello, today is Monday and we're gonna get started on reading Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Yaros? I am currently on my lunch break. It's been a great work morning so far. I just made lunch, I ate my lunch, I've got some tea. Let's get started on reading. Okay, now I love, love a good fantasy map. However, this one is just a little bit challenging to read. I feel like the choice to print gray on slightly lighter gray maybe wasn't a good one for access reasons. I squint I can read it. Following text has been faithfully transcribed from Navarran into the modern language. That's cool, I like that. I appreciate that the first <laughs> use of the word fuck is like on like the third paragraph of this story, which is quite surprising given the fact that it just had this text about this book being transcribed from the original language because I figured with this kind of text voice of the story would be a bit more like old-fashioned and traditional. Nope. <laughs> We are up to page 18 and the person who I assume to be the love interest has just been introduced pretty quick into the story. And the reason why I'm pretty sure this person is the love interest is because of the small fourth wing spoilers that I've seen on Instagram reels, this is the name that pops up. Also just given the way that he's described, he's tall with windblown black hair and dark brows, the line of his jaw is strong, covered by warm tawny skin. And there's this like massive paragraph describing him and there's been no such detail given given to the other characters in the story. And also he hates her and wants to kill her. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be an enemies to lovers story. I like so far that Mira has a strong relationship with her sister. Mira is now a, Mira? Mira, Mira is about to take the test to get into the war college. She doesn't want to go into the war college and be a dragon rider. She wants to be a scribe. She's more bookish. And she's entering into this world where it's very cutthroat and apparently the love interest, whose name is Zayden, wants to kill her and he's a couple of years above her at the school. Like, you know that this is the love interest because even the diagonal scar that bisects his left eyebrow and marks the top corner of his cheek only made him hotter, flaming hot, scorching hot, and then it, it goes on. It, it's a really contemporary modern voice and the dialogue, um, I don't know if to me, the, the voice of the story matches the setting of the story, Oh shit, I whisper, his eyes narrow, as if he can hear me over the howl of the wind that rips my secure braid. Sorengale, he steps towards me and I look up and up. 
<laughs> Good gods, I don't even reach his collarbone. He's massive. He has to be more than four inches above six feet tall. Why is it that every single love interest in every single like romance story I've read to date has the exact same caricature of a guy as the love interest? Like it's the same guy every single time. It is much, much later now and I have read a chunk of the story. I'm currently up to page 79. Violet is in a tree. She has made friends. She has her childhood best friend whose name is Dane. He's in the year above her. Clearly he has a thing for her. He wants to protect her. I don't love love triangles. They annoy the bejesus out of me. So I'm hoping that this doesn't become like a fully fledged love triangle thing. I don't like that. I like the setting. I really like the concept for the setting, but there's moments where the voice of the story just make me stumble in my enjoyment of it. Like the fact that <laughs> the word badass has been used so many times, like it just, there are certain little things like that that just really irk me. However, I will say I'm enjoying it so far. It's a very easy read. The pacing is really good. The plot is really compelling. And although I have problems with certain parts of the voice, I am enjoying the story. I think my favorite part so far is the fact that Violet, our main character, has a chronic illness. I think the way that that's been explored so far is interesting and I hope we get more depth on her illness throughout the story. Voice over Christy here to thank the lovely sponsor of this video, Square. Squarespace. Squarespace is a website builder which allows people to create fabulous websites with just a few clicks of a button. Squarespace uses Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design system that makes it so easy for users to unlock their creativity. Squarespace's templates are the very best in class, plus you can customize every design detail with drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Fluid Engine is built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site. This makes it so convenient to design exactly the website that you want and to connect with the people who are interested in the things that you make. If you're looking to make a website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Christy Ann Jones to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. It has not been very long since the last time I checked in with you guys. I'm up to page 85. Zayda, so she was in a, she was in a tree and um, she she got down from the tree. She was eavesdropping on Zayden and she sees this group of students form together with Zayden. She waits until they're gone. She gets down from the tree. Zayden is waiting for her. He sees her and she's like, okay, that's fine. You've caught me in the dark. You can kill me. And then he decides not to kill her. He pointedly looks at one dagger, then the other and sighs, folding his arms across his chest. That stance is really the best defense you can muster. No wonder image you nearly ripped your arm off. I'm more dangerous than you think, I flat out bluster. <laughs> So I see, I'm quaking in my boots, the corner of his mouth rises into a mocking smirk. I flip the daggers in my hand, pinching them at the tips, and flick my wrists and fire them past his head. You missed, he doesn't even flinch. Did I? I reach for my last two blades, why don't you back up a couple steps and test that theory? I hate flirting, basically. Zayden could have killed her, just here. They're in the dark, he clearly hates her, whatever. I don't think Zayden is bad. So my theory, I'm telling you guys this now, just in case this is right, my theory is that Zayden Zayden and Mira's brother, Mira's brother who died, he's like five years older than her or something. My theory is that the two of them were friends, that Zayden doesn't hate Mira, that he's pretending to hate her, and that there's a reason why there's this mystery surrounding the death of her brother. I think it's something to do with Zayden, and I think it's gonna turn out that Zayden doesn't wanna kill her, and that there was like some kind of friendship between them. That is my theory right now. There is some startling <laughs> self-awareness here. You are not attracted to toxic men, except, honey, the, <laughs> I mean, there's also a lot of this, a lot of this word full stop, another word full stop, another word, sentences that are over and over again broken up with like these full stops. Page 131, we're continuing this bit where Zayden wants to kill her and... <laughs> He still hasn't, even though he's had so many opportunities. You want to know why you're still alive? Because you're the scale I currently judge myself against every night, every day I let you live, I get to convince myself that there's still a part of me that's a decent person. Okay, we have some kind of reason for his behavior, like some kind of depth to him starting to happen. I hope that this continues. Page 169, she has a dragon, she has been chosen, she's now officially a proper dragon rider because she has a dragon. Okay, I actually really giggled here. So the dragon can read her thoughts, which is like, as in like the dragon can communicate with her. She says so much for privacy. And the big grumpy dragon says, you'll never be alone again. And I had a good giggle at this one. This was funny. Oh my God. Page 185. 
Zayden's and Mira's dragons are mated, which means that now Zayden and Mira are linked together. This is the kind of forced proximity trope, which is like really fun. Like that is, that is so silly and such bad luck. And I love it to bits. Oh, and also, I don't know if I mentioned, Mira has two dragons, not just the big grumpy dragon, but also the little cute dragon. And I love them both dearly. I love both of these dragons. A plus to the dragons. I feel like I'm flying through this book. Like I'm having a lot of fun reading this. There are a lot of things that aren't really to my taste in this book. As I've, I've mentioned the dialogue, I've mentioned the voice, I've mentioned a few different things, but I'm finding the plot really fun, which is, is essentially what I wanted from this story. So much of this story has been about Mira, like finding her feet. She's obviously weaker than all of the other students, but now she has this really strong and powerful dragon and the dragon is mated with the Zayden's dragon. So now now Zayden cannot kill her. He was never going to kill her, but you know, he can't kill her because if she dies, her dragon will die. No, the rider will die if the dragon dies. And so Zayden is now linked with Mira. Dane, who was Mira's childhood friend, the one who I said, I don't, I don't want a love triangle. He seems nice, but also I get really bad vibes from him. So like, n n I'm not super a fan of Dane. She's gone through all this stuff and he kisses her and this is like big moment. And she realizes that she no longer is attracted to Dane. She's so attracted to Zayden. And I'm so happy because like the childhood male friend trope is not, we're not exploring that it seems. I don't think this is gonna be a five star book for me. Like it just, it, the character isn't deep enough for me. The dialogue I don't really love. The voice I don't really love. I don't feel super grounded in this setting and I'm understanding some of the discourse I've seen around this book, which is basically if you're a romance fan, you'll really like the book. But if you're a fantasy fan, you probably won't because I think that this book is written more for people who are interested in romance than people who are interested in world building or setting. Like I'm having having quite a bit of trouble picturing this world. I'm having quite a bit of trouble picturing the characters actually for Zayden. I keep picturing Hian from Final Fantasy XIV because Hian is tall with dark hair and has a scar on his eyebrow. And so it just, just keeps making it really funny that I keep picturing Hian instead of whoever Zayden is supposed to look like. Anyway, I'm, I, I've, got, I've got little bits that I, like, I'm not perfectly gelling with with the story, but I am finding it fun. Happy Tuesday evening. I am about this far of the way through Fourth Wing. Violet, our main character, has just told Dane, let's get one thing straight, Dane. The reason we'll never be anything more than friends isn't because of your rules. It's because you have no faith in me. Even now when I've survived against all odds and bonded not just one, but two dragons, you still think I won't make it. And so she has this moment of conflict with him where basically she tells him off because he doesn't believe in her. And I really enjoyed that bit. I thought that was great. She's standing up for herself and she's communicating properly. I'm going to be making a lasagna tonight, which I'm very excited for because I have never made pastry, rather I've never made pasta from scratch before. So I'm excited to do that. to page 310 of Fourth Wing. Let me pull up my notes because I have a bunch of notes on the book. Still enjoying the plot of the story. Overall, I still feel like the world could be better fleshed out. I feel like these characters could be deeper. Rhiannon 
which is Mira's friend seems to only pop in quite shallowly when it benefits Mira. I mean, there's been some fun bits with Mira and Zayden in terms of like the love story aspect of this, but there's so much to do with the fantasy setting that I just want more, like I want more depth. So Dane, he has this power to be able to read a person's most recent memories if he touches them. Amber Mavis was one of the students that tried to kill Mira. Obviously Amber didn't realize that she would be seen because she's friends with Dane. Mira says that that person tried to kill me. Dane does not believe her. Dane says, I need to see your most recent thoughts in order to prove that you're not lying, which is a big like overstep in terms of trust. Mira wasn't happy about that. And we're now at this point in the story where Mira has her dragon, her powers haven't manifested, and one of her biggest weaknesses is that she's in this cutthroat school and she refuses to kill anyone. Like she's still a scribe at heart, except this is a world in which you need to like, kill or be killed basically. I have some problems with the economics of that. Like if there are so few dragon riders, and I get that there are more dragons than dragon riders in this world and so the dragon riders need to be quite competitive with each other in order to be able to get their dragons but even for those who can't get a dragon I still feel like those are really important soldiers like they've been trained they have like all of this knowledge of combat and all of that kind of stuff so I feel like if you're this country that's constantly in war wouldn't you want to use those people because obviously they're good at combat so like if they're just dying and killing each other like they're gonna be better than the infantry soldiers which like there's a different part of the school which is just for infantry the dragon riders who don't get dragons are probably gonna be stronger than the infantry people so why would you just have them being killed <laughs> obviously to make the plot more compelling and interesting I just want to echo the same sentiment I've had the whole way through that all Although I have picky bits, although I have bits that aren't to my taste, I still feel engaged. I'm finding it very easy to read. There are little moments in the writing where I'm like, oh, I wish it wasn't worded that way. And you know, every time someone cocks an eyebrow, like it, it sends me like I, <laughs> it's one of my biggest pet peeves in books is when someone raises an eyebrow over and over and over and over again. And it's like, to my mind, you get one eyebrow raise per novel at, at, at all of any character. You get one, otherwise it's overwrought. Like it just, it drives me nuts. Particularly Zayden raising a single eyebrow and other characters doing it as well. And it, it kills me. I find it so annoying. I'm gonna keep reading this tonight. I'm excited to see where I'm going to get up to. Christy, why do you have the curtain down in the middle of the day and all of the lamps on when you could just use the sunlight? If that was up, this room would be a thousand bazillion degrees in about five minutes and I do want to sit here and read this book today. So hello, this is chapter 33 of the book. We are still following the kind of standard romance genre structure. Past the 75% mark of the book, all of the steamy scenes have happened, like the characters are in love, Mira and Zayden are clearly in love and clearly bonded together and something is obviously about to happen that's going to tear them apart right when you've read enough romance stories for some reason I now have I think I've read like five or six and they all tend to have that same structure of the two characters come together and then something brings them apart and then they come back together again so that's probably what's going to happen in this story however this is a series and I have not read a romance series before so I don't know how that's going to go but essentially Mira and Zayden are now properly in love they're in his room and someone knocks on the door and says grab your flat leathers and you'd better bring Sorengale with you too. Garrick says we're under attack. I am now gonna finish the last 70-ish pages of this book. Page 424. She's wearing Zayden's jacket because she's run out of his room and obviously she's like not got like all of her clothes or whatever. And Rhiannon and her friend notices because they're preparing for the attack. They're preparing for someone to tell them what's going on. Just goes to show that neither of us was thinking clearly. It could be any third years. I shrug. With a fourth wing shield on the shoulder she cocks an eyebrow again and again with the eyebrow I swear not that many people can raise a single eyebrow like it's not it's not really an easy thing to do I can raise one eyebrow and it's only this one and the reason why I can do it is because when I was like in year eight there, were, uh, there was like a small accident that happened I was in PE and someone kicked a ball and it hit this piece of metal in the roof and it fell on me and it scarred this eyebrow so technically like Zayden I also have a scar through my eyebrow you just can't see it most of the time because of makeup and whatever and ever since I've been able to raise this eyebrow and not like I can raise both of them but I think something obviously happened there so now I can raise an eyebrow but my point is that not everyone can do that and also have you ever in real life been talking to someone and they've raised an eyebrow at you and it's not been like 
the most exaggerated out of place action ever. Like I, I don't know why this one gets to me so much, but stop raising a single eyebrow. Oh no. The attack wasn't really an attack, it's like a war game thing that they're doing and Zayden's taken Violet and defied what Dane wanted and whatever and they went off on their own to go do like these war game things that the college puts on and Mira has just discovered that Zayden is friends with the enemy, like the people they're fighting in this war. Right, so the fact that Zayden didn't tell her that he was trying to help the enemies because the enemy is not really the enemy because the government of the country where Mira lives is actually hiding a whole bunch of stuff. The reason Zayden couldn't tell her is because if Violet had been touched by Dane at any point, Dane could have seen her memories and then gone and told everyone, this is bigger than you and me and leadership will stop at nothing to sit behind their wards and keep the Venon secret, Venon are these other things. I watched my own father executed trying to help these people. I couldn't risk you too. He leans into my space a little more with every word launching my pulse, but I'm done letting my heart make my head's choices. You love me and loved. I correct him, sidestepping so I can get some fucking space and then talking about it. Love, he shouts, stopping me in my tracks and earning us a glance from every rider within hearing distance. You love me. One of those little embers in my chest tries to come back to life and I squash it before it has the chance to burn. I slowly turn to face him. Everything I feel, I swallow, fighting to hold on to the anger so I don't fall apart. Felt for you was based on secrets and deception. There's the thing that's gonna tear them apart. This would be hitting me so much harder if I felt like Zayden and Mira were real people. Like, I love the plot beats here. I think this is really fun, but it's just that I can't really feel the full effects of what's going on because I just don't feel attached to them enough. Oh no. <laughs> Dang. Oh, I knew I didn't like him. Right before they left for the war games, Dane like hugged Violet goodbye and touched her face and whatever. Dane who's angry at her. Dane who can read people's most recent memories if he touches them. Read her memories without her realizing and gone and betrayed her. I, oh, but that was actually a good little twist. I, although I didn't like Dane, I did not guess he was going to betray her. And obviously that's been foreshadowed this whole way through the book. So I appreciate that. That was really good. Chapter 39 of the book. This is now from Zayden's perspective. A bunch of sad stuff has happened. There was an attack. I can't be bothered explaining it. This video is going to be way too long if I do. Their friend Liam is dead, Mira is unconscious. It would have been sadder again if I felt more connected to these characters. Okay, Violet wakes up. She nods and stretches her arm like a cat who's been napping in the sun before reaching for the blankets. They're in a, a new place that I don't recognize. There's a temple of Amari. Violet doesn't seem to really remember what's going on. Okay, no doubt, now she does remember. Where are we? She bites out every word, her eyes narrowing on me. Say it. The way you look at me means you already know. There's no way this brilliant woman doesn't recognize that temple. Zayden asks her, is she willing to fight for their side, for this conspiracy that's been revealed? Because obviously her mother and the people running the school haven't been entirely honest about what's going on in this world. Oh, <laughs> Zayden, I'd forgotten what it felt like to be loved, really loved. I like this little bit of Zayden's character that it's clear that he's desperate for love because he was orphaned like as a young child. So it's like we get a little bit of insight into his character kind of at the end here. Okay, so we are on the last page now, page 498. Her eyes widen as if she's finally seeing the resolve in mind. It's time she knows everything. Knowing Violet, she won't stay tucked away, safe behind the Basgeath walls, especially not now that she knows how corrupt those walls are. There's someone who's been knocking at the door <gasps> was I right? That definitely wasn't an accident, little sister. He says from the doorway. <gasps> Brennan, she stares at her brother in open mouth shock. Brennan just grins and opens his arms. Welcome to the revolution, Violet. Oh my god, I picked it. I picked it. <laughs> yes! Yes, okay. What did I write down? What were the exact words that I wrote down in my notes? Page 84, my prediction is that Zayden was friends with Violet's older brother somehow, so when Zayden's father killed him, it was to cover up something or to punish them. I predict that Zayden's going to have never hated her. I love that kind of plot twist, like the kind of plot twist that, like it, you, you can guess it, but it doesn't feel that obvious that it's just not fun when you get to it. That is so much fun. It's not exactly a new fantasy favorite for me. As I said, there's a lot of places where 
the voice fell down, the characters fell down, the world building fell down, got really frustrated with people cocking one eyebrow over and over again, and the little bits of prose where it was a word full stop, a word full stop, a word full stop, like little bits like that kind of irked me a bit, especially after a while. However, I can see why there's a lot of hype for this book, I can see why people enjoyed it. It's more a romance novel than it is a fantasy novel. It's a romance novel, romance plot. The A plot is basically romance with a fantasy setting kind of sitting underneath it. But as I said, it was fun. Like if you're willing to look past all of that kind of stuff, I kind of find that I need to be in the right headspace for this kind of book. If I'm not going in expecting to really, really enjoy the world building and fantasy elements, then I can just read it purely for plot and not like take the book too seriously, if that makes sense. Because I'm a fantasy reader, I want that depth. And because I love language and prose, and obviously I'm a writer as well, I'm also a reader that really cares about voice. And so this book didn't really hit home on all of those levels for me. However, the plot was fun enough, engaging enough for me to be hooked by the story the whole way through. I enjoyed it. I know that there's a second book coming out and I am probably gonna pick up the book and read the second book. I'd probably give it four stars, like on the lower end, of the four stars. Like in terms of the writing, writing, world building, character, it's it, the book is probably a lot lower than that. However, in terms of how hooked I was by the story, how much fun the reading process was, assuming that I turned my brain off to those little things that irked me, I enjoyed it overall. And so I, th I think it's gonna sit around the four star category. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And also I wanted to say an enormous thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting my channel. Over on Patreon, we have a whole bunch of lovely bonus content, bonus videos, writing updates. So if you want to support my channel and get bonus content from me, please feel free to check out Patreon. Take care everyone and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.